Listen to me carefully. It's all bum ditty. Hey you guys, Johnny Banjo here with the Banjo File. Thank you for stopping by. So, bum ditty. What's up with that anyway? What is it and why is it so important? Well, bum ditty is nothing more than a reference to the rhythm pattern that is so emblematic of claw hammer banjo. Um, it's this rhythm pattern here. Maybe you can hear why that's called bum ditty, right? It's one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and bum ditty, bum ditty, bum ditty, bum ditty. So where does that rhythm pattern come from? Well, in part, it's what claw hammer is intended to do. It's uh, often used to accompany fiddle tunes that have that kind of driving rhythm pattern. And as a complement to it, so too does claw hammer banjo. But um, I think more importantly, the rhythm pattern, the bum ditty rhythm pattern, is an artifact of the technique as well. It just follows from the technique. If all you're doing is down picking, if that's all you can do, then what are you gonna do with that? Where are you gonna put those all important down pick? Because you can only do this so fast, right? So where are you gonna put those all important down picks? You're probably gonna put them on the beats. That makes sense. One, two, three, four. Your hand is gonna keep beat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And you're probably gonna put them on all the beats in order to you know, maximize the um, utility of this somewhat limited, gross, if you will, technique. This, um, it's not, not exactly a refined technique. You're kind of using your hand as a club to peck at the strings, to beat at the strings. So to make maximum use of that, um, you're probably going to keep it going. Your hand is going to keep going up and down, up and down, just like, a, just like a machine, like a sewing machine. Up, down, up, down, up, down. And so what, what can you do with that? Well, we can, we can just uh, uh, pluck out all of the uh, beats, in which case we're doing this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Bum, 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 bum. So you keep going on all the beats, okay? Well, that gets boring. I mean, you're not a metronome. So what else can you do? Um, if, if just going bum, 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 bum on all the downbeats gets boring. Maybe do it on only the strong beats. Let's say the one and the three. Um, and then on the two and four, do something else. Maybe do strums. Like, I don't know, like this. Um, that works nice. That sounds like a really nice accompaniment pattern. So if somebody else is playing or singing lead, you can accompany them by doing a nice little pattern like that. So you got a bum dit, bum dit, bum dit, bum dit. That sounds good. Okay, what about the fifth string? Right? We talked in the previous video about uh, the use of the thumb and the all important fifth string and that drone note. And we talked about how it's never down picked, how you're never going to take your claw and strike the fifth string on the downbeat like this. That, that's not a thing you do in claw hammer. Your thumb lives on the fifth string and, and you down pick, you strike the four long strings. So when we, if we're doing bum dit, Where, where are we going to stick in those thumbed notes? Well, we already talked about how they come in on the upbeat, right? So what upbeats? All of them? That's going to start to uh, be a little much, right? See how that sounds pretty busy? So what else can we do? Well, the only other thing that kind of makes sense is to leave the strong beats alone. Just do our bums on the strong beats. 
and add our uh, fifth string drone notes on the upbeats of the offbeats, the two and four. That sounds good. That's not uh, overpowering the emphasis of the one and three downbeats. It's a good pattern that makes sense. It's a good driving rhythm. It allows for good accompaniment. It's a good fill pattern if you need to fill in um, uh, on uh, rests or sustained notes. If we were to do the opposite, if we were to put the um, fifth string on the one and three beats, um, it would sound weird. It would sound like this. What you would have then is sort of a, a bumper dit, bumper dit, bumper dit, bumper dit, bumper dit, bumper dit, and that's giving weird emphasis to the two and four beats. In some circumstances, maybe you want that. Um, sounds a little, I don't know, heavy metal to me, like bumper dit, bumper dit, bumper dit, bumper dit. Um, I don't think there's too many people playing heavy metal banjo, but I'm sure there, I'm sure there's someone out there doing it. So you get bumper dit, bumper dit, and if that's what you want, um, then fine. But I think for most generic purposes, the bum diddy bum diddy uh, is just more suitable. And so that bum diddy rhythm pattern is just the default pattern, the default rhythm pattern in in all of Clawhammer. It's the underlying default rhythm pattern. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and... And to be clear, those ditties are not necessarily strums, right? It's just a rhythm pattern. So you, you can have bum ditty without strums. That's bum ditty too, and I'm not doing any brushes. Now that pattern is so fundamental to claw hammer playing, it's the fundamental default rhythm pattern and everything else is just a variation or an extension on bum ditty. You already heard one when we did this. Is that bum ditty? Yeah, it is. It's just a variation on bum ditty. It's bum dit, bum dit, bum dit. We're leaving off the T off the ditty. So I'm not, I'm not sounding the fifth string each time, but it's still bum ditty underlying it. We've just modified it. We've just chopped off the T and left it bum dit, bum dit, bum dit, bum dit. Or you could replace the ditties with bums and have just runs of bums. For example, Sometimes I'm taking out the ditties and replacing them with bums and I get Another variation that you'll hear a lot on the default bum ditty rhythm pattern would be bumper ditty such as for example when uh, when you do double thumbing Or when you do drop thumb such as this Or when you do hammer-ons. Or with alternate string pull-offs. Those are all variations of bum ditty that I would call bump a ditty, bump a ditty, or in some cases bump a ditty bum ditty bump a ditty bum ditty what if you're in waltz time then you're doing another variation on bum ditty that i would call bum ditty ditty bum ditty ditty or i could add a triplet to the first beat and do a bumpity ditty And there are all kinds of other variations as well. Now you're going to hear from some people who say, well, I don't do bum ditty. 
Yeah, you do. Of course you do. How, what, what else are you going to do? When, you, when your technique consists of just going like this, what else can you do? Well, I only play in 6 8th time. That's not bum diddy. Uh. <laughs> well, true, it's not bum diddy, but it's still a variation on bum diddy. It's bumpity diddity, bumpity diddity, bumpity diddity, bumpity diddity. You just don't think of it as bum diddy. And you're doing yourself a great disservice because you're missing out on an opportunity to um, give yourself a universal underlying framework for understanding banjo music. Whatever banjo music you might play or hear or um, see in tablature. So if you hear a cool song, somebody else playing claw hammer, uh, playing a cool claw hammer tune that you'd like to be able to play, if you think about it as just somehow being a variation on, an extension of bum diddy, where is that bum diddy underlying pattern? That gives you a way to wrap your head around that song and start thinking about how it's, how it's constructed and how you could replicate it. If you think in terms of bum diddy and you're trying to imagine how you would arrange a cool song that you like for banjo, the first step is to think about how would I break that down into bum diddy? Where is the bum diddy in that tune? How can I get it to fit the bum diddy pattern? And you might have to make some compromises. You might have to uh, change the rhythm pattern a little bit, um, shift the emphasis of some notes or drop some notes out. But the first step in thinking about how to take a song you like and perform it in claw a banjo is to think about where is the bum diddy in that, in that tune? And then you're thinking about how you would play it on banjo. When I pick up a piece of tablature, I look for the bum diddy underlying pattern. I think about that tablature as being somehow bum diddy. It might be quite a variation on it, but somehow there's a bum diddy in there and I look for the bum diddy. That's kind of my anchoring point. And then I get a way to understand what that tablature is trying to communicate to me and how that translates to music, how that translates to sound, how that translates to a performance on the banjo. So don't dismiss the bum diddy. Embrace it. Bum diddy is a useful tool for understanding your music and thinking about how claw hammer banjo should be played. Okay, so that's it for this video series on the basic claw hammer stroke. Hopefully if you've been following along and trying the techniques and practicing, you now have a good idea of how the basic claw hammer stroke works and you can execute it to strike single strings, do brushes, and sound the fifth string as desired. You should also now be prepared to bum diddy your way through some simple songs. For now, you should be focused on good form. Practice slowly and deliberately so that you're developing the appropriate muscle memory and internalizing good habits. Don't let mistakes hurt your confidence. Speed and accuracy develop over time with lots of practice. I'll post additional videos to help you work on your accuracy and to learn new techniques such as double thumbing and drop thumb. And most importantly, I'll do videos of some simple songs that you can play right now with the skills that you've already learned along with some variations to keep you challenged as your playing ability develops. Thank you for joining me for this video series. I hope you'll watch my future videos and happy claw hammering.